Éric Lefebvre, directeur général, partenariat du quartier des spectacles, Montréal. Donc, première question, Eric. Pourquoi c'est important de parler aujourd'hui des quartiers créatifs et culturels? Bien, je pense que c'est tellement une question pertinente. Aujourd'hui, on veut des villes authentiques, on veut des villes complètes, on veut des villes où les gens se sentent bien. Maintenant, le grand débat, c'est pas juste des débats économiques, c'est des débats de qualité de vie. Et la qualité de vie, ça passe par les arts et la culture. Fait que cette rencontre entre le développement urbain, les arts et la culture est plus pertinente que jamais. Euh, on veut être à l'image locale, mais on veut être quand même des villes ouvertes sur le monde. Donc tout ça, ça passe aussi par ce que les artistes, les créateurs sont capables de, de faire pour nous aider à comprendre. Puis, puis quand on parle d'art créateur, on a souvent tendance à en parler de, des arts murales, on va parler de, du théâtre, mais c'est aussi l'architecture, le design, c'est comment on trouve notre ville belle, la beauté. Fait que pour moi, la question de la rencontre entre l'urbain, l'art et la culture, c'est une question de beauté. Merveilleux. Et la deuxième et dernière question, Eric, c'est par rapport à la sustainability, la durabilité. C'était un sujet qui était au cœur de cette rencontre. Pourquoi on parlait de ça? Quels sont les trois challenges, si on va dire, qui sont au cœur des quartiers créatifs et culturels par rapport à ça? Bien, évidemment, comme, comme toutes les industries, on a des questions à se poser sur comment euh, on améliore nos pratiques. Mais je pense que c'est la partie la plus évidente. C'est les mêmes combats qu'on a tous. Euh, puis on a un rôle à jouer là-dessus. Mais la partie qui est la plus intéressante, c'est quand on rassemble des foules euh, pour des festivals à Montréal, c'est 6 millions de personnes qui participent euh, à nos événements. Imaginez le vecteur de changement social que ça représente. Donc, euh, on a la capacité d'influencer, d'influer, d'accélérer, de faire comprendre autour de ça. Fait que pour moi, c'est cette rencontre-là entre ces grands rendez-vous festifs puis la capacité d'insuffler un changement social. Euh, ça n'a pas besoin d'être drastique. On peut le faire par le discours, mais aussi le faire par des pratiques exemplaires. Fait que je pense que c'est un petit peu autour de ça qu'il est la conversation, euh, puis qu'on doit continuer dans ce sens -là. OK, Andrea, thank you very much. First of all, uh, what is your name and what is the name of the organization you work, you work with? My name is Andrea Dempster Chung, and I'm co founder and executive director of Kingston Creative. We're a small arts nonprofit located in Kingston, Jamaica, in the Caribbean. Thank you. Well, our first question is why do you think it is important, if it is, to talk, discuss, and work about creative and cultural districts now nowadays? Mm, it's a very specialized area, and I think a lot of placemakers and people who run cultural districts and cultural spaces have found over the years there's no one who really gets their unique set of challenges. And so this space at Global Cultural Districts allows for commonality, knowledge exchange. And I know that when I came, I, I was like, wow, somebody really gets it. They understand what, what I'm dealing with, the, the private sector, with the public sector, the government partners and all of this. So there's a lot of different dynamics and it's great to just have a community of practice where you can learn, where you can share, and where they actually do awesome research as well. Okay, and our second question is, can you summarize like the three most important challenges that creative and cultural districts are facing right now globally or locally? Yeah, um, I think it depends whether you're in the global north or global south. Yeah. Um, one of them I think is funding and I think uh, the second, so there's an economic um, case to be made for even having a cultural district. Um, and then leveraging that funding and making it a priority. In a developing nation, having a cultural district is just not a priority. Go to the beach, <laughs> gather there. Why are you making this cultural district? So I think that's one, there's that economic case to be made. Um, I think the second one is maybe knowledge. There's a way in which we don't want to repeat uh, the mistakes of the past in terms of gentrifying neighborhoods, which are very delicate cultural ecosystems. Um, and so, You know, it's good to learn from districts that have done it before and to find the right way to develop a neighborhood without gentrification. Because for some of our cultural districts, gentrification is death, you know, because the districts are still dynamic. They're still churning out new music, new dances. And so we want to make sure that balance is there. And I think the last um, challenge that is facing cultural districts, um, I think there's an issue of maybe just understanding their relevance. Um, you know, as we're looking at globalization, we're looking at AI, we're looking at the impact of technology. 
I mean, you know, which way do you go? Do you have an AI virtual guided tour of your district? Do you do virtual reality experiences? Do you lean into actually people coming in? You know, so I think technology is an important factor and a dynamic, and we need to understand whether we are focusing on in-person live experiences or whether we're also going to focus on using technology to amplify these districts and make them relevant to a younger audience, the, the visitor of the future. So I'm Simon Bro, I'm the director and CEO of the Canada Council for the Arts, and I'm also the chair of the International Federation of Arts Council and Cultural Agencies. First of all, why uh, we are talking about creating and cultural districts in this polycrise context? I think it's very important to realize that uh, societies are struggling all over the world with many, many different issues, a lot of different crises that have impacts on each other. And in that world, we kind of need to find ways to bring people together, to create trust, trusting spaces, and to be able to convene all the different sectors of society. And arts and culture is a big convener. And those cultural districts are ways to uh, really create communities. Even if people come from different backgrounds, even if they have different ambitions, they can share, at least for a moment, uh, you know, and the enjoyment of arts and culture and start conversations that will have an impact on society. So I think it's very, very important right now to pay attention to that. One of the most important topics is sustainability. What do you think about it? Uh, and uh, I don't know, what is the most important ways for uh, challenges? Yeah. challenges? I think that the, the sustainability for the arts and cultural sector will happen only if we don't work in isolation. I think being isolated from the rest of the society is the best way to not be able to sustain because you, you always need resources in order to create and to present, but those resources are coming from the society and the society needs to realize that it returns to it. And I think sustainability is really this question of uh, exchanges of back and forth between the artists, the presenters, the leaders of the cultural sector, and people uh, at the street level. The more that exchange will be real and authentic and genuine, the more we will progress towards sustainability. I mean, first of all, my name is Shanine Bathina, and recently I was the creative director for Coventry, which is the UK City of Culture in 2021. Um, and so my role really there was to think about how we promote the city as a city of culture, but how we do that with communities and, and how we tell the story of a city through its communities and not just its heritage and its history, but also who it is now and today and in, in kind of the 21st century. Um, so for me, um, I've always been a believer that culture um, makes change happen. It connects people, it brings people together. But I think what we find a lot of the time, particularly in cultural districts with big cultural venues, um, is that we've seen a bit of elitism creeping in where a lot of people don't feel that that is for them, that those buildings aren't for them, that the content isn't for them. Um, Maybe the environment isn't quite for them either. Um, and what we've seen is the rise of the kind of counterculture or alternative culture that happens in local neighborhoods, in community centers, in faith centers, on the streets, in parks. Um, and so it's really thinking about when you're working in a city, how do you embrace all of that? Because we're not saying that cultural districts are bad, but equally there's work for them to do to promote equity and inclusion. Um, and to think about their neighbours and their communities and their citizens and make sure that what they're doing is for those people. Um, but also to understand that they can't do everything um, and that we need to recognise all of the different cultures um, and cultural activities that people want and find ways to help them uh, or to encourage that really with them. Well, you've pretty much answered our second question, but <laughs> nonetheless, I'm going to do it. Okay. And how would you summarise the three most relevant challenges that uh, cultural and creative districts are facing right now? Yeah, I think 
Mm, the, the biggest the biggest challenges probably are how you balance a professional program um, which is inclusive and accessible to as many different people as possible. And I think, you know, particularly in the UK right now, there's a real focus on cultural democracy and a shift towards participation from being a spectator led industry to more of a participant industry um, and how theatres, galleries, uh, cinemas, you know, how, how all of them are thinking about that and embracing that whilst also, whilst also retaining their kind of world-class status or whatever they might have. So I think there's a real challenge there. I think the second challenge is around funding. I think certainly after COVID, um, you know, none of us have any money anymore. None of our cities have any money anymore. And actually, we're, we're starting to see that we need to be more active as a sector, as a cultural sector, in not solving problems, but being part of how problems are solved in our cities. So whether that's around mental health or homelessness or racial justice or whatever that might be, that actually what's our role in that and how do we work as a partnership in our cities to tackle that and, and to find creative solutions. So that's my second one. And then um, third one is probably... I think there's something about how we balance um, the kind of mainstream culture and cultural offer uh, with the kind of alternative kind of spaces. We were just talking earlier about um, all the development that's going on in cities and often, you know, through the planning laws, uh, the developers might build a gallery or a theatre or a music studio or something but actually who makes that decision who's deciding what's needed where and how do we ensure that it promotes not just the daytime economy but the nighttime economy as well so i think there's there's a big job to be done in cities to really make sure that what we're creating is for everybody um, and that everybody has their place in that offer um, one of the things we did in London when I worked for the Mayor of London is we looked at a creative infrastructure plan. So they have them for housing and they have them for transport where they're always looking at planning and what is needed where and what needs to be maintained and where the gaps are. And I think we need to do more of that with our cultural infrastructure so that we're making the case to government for what we need to maintain but also maybe what we need to lose um, but also where the gaps are and and who you know which parts of the community we're not currently kind of providing for and how we might find solutions for them. We would like to know your name and the name of the organization you uh, work with. Uh, I'm Tisha Lee, and I work for the Arts Federation located in Lafayette, Indiana. Great, Tisha, thank you. So our first question is, why would you say it is important, if it is, to talk, to think, and to work on creative and cultural districts? You know, um, for the pure art sake, um, it's great to get a concentration of arts assets together just to really represent the sector that exists within a specific geographic area. Um, if you're looking at it in a global sense and how it affects our local government, maybe some more digestible ways um, that governments can support cultural assets, the economic and community development aspects of cultural districts is huge. Um, you can actually put metrics to it where culture thrives. Um, economy thrives. Um, investment from developers also follow the arts. You can see that in examples within neighborhood development, um, even house, housing development. Um, the, the cultural districts have a lot of impact, um, and it's a destination for tourism, but also other creatives. If you have a concentration of those assets, you'll, you'll attract a more creative class to your community. And uh, we are in a Congress uh, which main the main topic is about sustainability. What would you say are the three main sustainable challenges that creative and cultural districts face nowadays? Sure. So um, first and foremost, I think the human capital to run and operate the cultural district and maintain those high standards and um, ensure that there is quality control and also that um, 
the different stakeholders have um, someone to voice their concerns to or to also sing their praises. So I think funding the human capital is first and foremost the powerful, the most powerful thing that um, can happen in terms of sustainability. And then you just have to have representation um, to make up that informative body that leads the cultural district. So that can be volunteers from the community, can be a board of governors, um, just, and, and again, it can be just individuals that are really interested in seeing the development in particular um, geographic area. And, and then finally, if you want to implement change, of course, the dollars behind it to see that. Because oftentimes when we have organizations or communities that say, okay, let's, let's have a cultural district, they are wanting almost instantaneous change. You know, uh, the patients to see it, okay, in five years you'll see that change. Um, is not something that a lot of folks are willing to do. Already they're taking a gamble on investing in the arts. So I would say you need to invest in your human capital in order for an effort to be sustainable and also put some dollars behind program programs and tangible outcomes. Um, because again, unless there's meaningful dollars in both of those buckets, it's just a cultural district in name. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Bonjour, hi. Quel est votre nom et votre organisation ou projet? Je suis Patrick Marmel du bureau de design de la ville de Montréal. Parfait. Donc, la première question, c'est évidente, mais c'est assez importante. Pourquoi c'est encore intéressant de parler aujourd'hui des quartiers et des territoires créatifs et culturels? Pour nous, le. le par Montréal et Ville UNESCO Design. C'est à ce site-là que je suis avec vous aujourd'hui. Euh, la désignation de, de, de villes créatives, c'est d'abord avant tout un investissement dans les personnes. Mm -hmm. C'est les personnes qui nous aident à, 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 à trouver des solutions pour les enjeux de la ville. Mm -hmm. et, et, et donc, il y a toujours de nouveaux enjeux. Les enjeux d'il y a 20 ans ne sont plus les enjeux d'aujourd'hui. Donc, on a toujours besoin du pouvoir des designers dans notre cas pour euh, réinventer la ville et, et faire face aux défis de l'inclusion, de la transition écologique. Super. Un sujet qui était au cœur de cette rencontre était la sustainability. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous en pensez par rapport à ça? Quels sont les trois challenges que vous pensez qui sont au cœur de cet enjeu? La, la, la durabilité, c'est un peu l'exigence clé du réseau des villes UNESCO, euh, des villes créatives de l'UNESCO, où on nous demande de répondre aux, aux, aux objectifs de développement durable des Nations Unies. Euh, les enjeux pour la durabilité, c'est de faire le pont entre, entre les problèmes. Euh, un, un projet de développement économique est une opportunité de euh, résoudre des enjeux d'inclusion, d'environnement, donc jamais penser les choses en silo les uns par rapport aux autres, euh, d'ouvrir les processus, mm -hmm. de ne pas, de pas avoir les, les fenêtres fermées, d'ouvrir les réseaux qu'on a, euh, de faire appel à des nouvelles personnes. Et la troisième, c'est euh, de faire de la place à, à l'innovation, peut-être, euh, pour trouver des solutions nouvelles. ¿Me puedes decir tu nombre y organización, por favor? Sí, claro. Uh, Eva María Chávez y trabajo para el Music Center de Los Ángeles. Maravilloso, Eva. Estamos en el Encuentro Mundial de Distritos Creativos y Culturales. ¿Por qué hablar hoy de distritos creativos y culturales? ¿Y qué experiencia destacas tú en el caso de Los Ángeles en este ámbito? A ver, ¿por qué? El por qué es la cultura está parte de nuestra vida en todos los momentos, ¿no? En todo lo que hacemos. Y más cuando somos latinos, es súper importante. En la casa, estamos bailando, estamos viendo arte, estamos viendo no, telenovelas. Es todo de lo que estamos haciendo. O sea, ahorita hablando de este tema es súper importante para mí. Y en Los Ángeles, es, Los Ángeles es una mezcla de... de de razas, es una mezcla de idiomas, es una mezcla también de arte y eso es lo que es súper importante, lo que me encanta de Los Ángeles. Me imagino que en muchos, muchas ciudades en Colombia, en México, que yo soy de México, es tan bonito ver cómo la gente inter like, interacts 
um, con cada uno y aprende de otras culturas por el baile, por la danza, por el arte, por el teatro. Y una cosa lo que me encanta es que la gente cómo se siente cuando está viendo este teatro, cuando, cuando está viendo el, el baile, se sienten tan no cómodos, pero yo creo decir que se sienten como si ahorita están vivos y le tienen alegría, ¿no? Y por eso estamos hablando de esto y más en Los Ángeles que ahorita después del COVID, de que la gente está encerrada, es más importante ahora de que otros, otros tiempos. Quisiéramos saber qué rol juega justamente la institución en la que trabajas de Music Center en esa lógica de distritos creativos y culturales. Ustedes están insertos en uno de ellos, ¿en cuál? So, el rol que jugamos nosotros ahorita es súper importante. Somos eh, la organización más grande en West Coast después de, del Kennedy Center en Nueva York. So nosotros tenemos muchos papeles que jugar, ¿no? Primero tenemos la, el baile, el, el ballet, la danza. Tenemos muchos programas que son gratuitos para la gente y eso es una de las grandes cosas que nosotros ayudamos. Es cómo podemos traer la cultura a las personas, pero cómo trabajamos con las personas también para que nos enseñen más de sus culturas en las comunidades. So voy a dar un ejemplo. En Los Ángeles tenemos es una ciudad súper grande, necesitas coche. So ya sabemos que la gente no va a venir a nuestros centros. Ya sabemos que es una barrera para venir a nuestros centros por el bus o por carro. So tenemos que ir a sus comunidades, trabajar con ellos, trabajar con los artistas que están allí, que normalmente no van a venir a nuestro centro. Y el rol allí es dar dinero, primero. Ayudar a los artistas. Segundo, aprender. Aprender es una cosa fundamental en nuestro centro que tenemos que hacer porque si no estamos aprendiendo de la comunidad, la comunidad no, vamos a, no van a venir a nuestros centros y queremos mejorar y deepen the cultural lives de todos los agentes de Los Ángeles. Este año un tema central es el de la sostenibilidad. Mm. Tú vienes de darnos pues, una masterclass fabulosa <risa> no. sobre sostenibilidad a partir de data eh, y como una definición muy singular de indicadores que nos conmovió mucho porque en últimas es agregar valor a la vida de las personas. ¿Nos cuentas un poco más del trabajo que haces y del enfoque que les das? Sí. So, sobre los datos y data, lo que es, es data tú se puede colectar en diferentes maneras. ¿no? So, una de las maneras que yo colecto la data es no nomás por encuestas, pero hablar con las personas, hacer entrevistas, preguntarles preguntas como ¿qué tipo de actividades quieres ver en nuestro centro? ¿Qué podemos mejorar? Si este centro es para la gente de Los Ángeles, tenemos que preguntarle a la gente de Los Ángeles y esas, esos datos. ¿no? Sostenibilidad yo creo que es para mejorar y ser relevante, relevant. En, en, nuestro, en nuestra ciudad es aprender de la gente y tener los datos para tener información, para tener más research y evidence. Una de las cosas que es súper importante para mí es preguntarle a la gente en diferentes maneras. So, ahorita estoy haciendo photo voice y lo que es photo voice es yo pongo cámaras disponibles en diferentes partes de nuestros centros cuando tenemos eventos y tengo una pregunta grande, es ¿qué parte de este evento te trajo a joy, te trajo alegría, alegría ¿no? Y ellos tienen que tomar la parte que les trajo Joy. So, yo estoy haciendo la colección de datos por fotos. No necesito que la gente me hable, no necesito que la gente me, me esté poniendo una encuesta. Y yo colecto todas esas fotos y hago una, una negativa. Y, no, y estoy hablando de lo que significa y qué parte de nuestro evento les trajo la más alegría. Y eso es más poderoso, yo creo, que de una encuesta que me dice, sí, estoy de acuerdo. Um, so, esa es una de las cosas que podemos vamos a hacer que no, que no dura tanto tiempo y no necesita tanta expertise, expertise para tener esa información. What do you think creative districts add to uh, territorial development? Well, you know, their value is multiple and it really will depend on the way they've been thought out. But I think as a general rule, having a structure that encourages individual institutions to look beyond the borders of their walls and actually think about their outside programming and think about the way they can collaborate. It can, if it's done well and if it's done with the right purposes and the right strategy, 
elevate the entire creative tissue of an area, of a city, of a region. So, you know, we, we have a great example of this here at the Quartier des Spectacles in Montreal, have been doing this for so long, but there are many other examples in the world. And I think that's, for me, is, is what the added value of being a district or a hub, or at least collaborating outside of your halls, I think that's the main value of it. And then, you know, it's going to have a plurality of other impacts and other values, even economic. We can make money with culture, uh, but it's not the only one. But I think the main one is really like the collaboration can really bring to things better, you know. Um, I think there's a saying in English that says, a rising tide raises all ships. And that's kind of the idea of being behind the collaboration districts. Great. And taking your experience into account as, you know, the uh, director of this convening, of this international mm -hmm. convening, what would you say are the three most important challenges that creative districts are facing right now? Well, I, it's broad because, you know, it's going to change contextually. But I think um, one big one right now is sustainability, of course. And I think that's not just cultural districts. That's the entire world, right? So within, but within districts, you have very focused challenges around sustainability. You have several districts, for instance, in Europe or in the U.S. that have older buildings that need to be renovated, that need to be thought out. In districts that are coming up, you'll have new builds. And how do you deal with, you know, the impact of building uh, new buildings in the world that we have today? Like, how do you plan for that? Um, also about touring exhibitions, you know, all of those challenges, I think, boil down to really like sustainability being one of the big ones. Um, then I would say, you know, the pandemic has really changed the way people live, people consume culture, people live downtown. And so I think this evolution needs still to be taken into account by many places in the world. And that I think, you know, it's, 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 It's not a big challenge. It's not a threat. It's more of an opportunity if taken correctly, but it needs to be addressed and it needs to be thought out. Um, and then money. Money is always a problem. You know, uh, there's not enough funding to go around. And when there is funding, it can be hard to get. And I think we've heard that in some of the sessions in the last two days. So I think, you know, trying to find ways through partnerships, through collaboration to streamline those processes I think is also like a, an important uh, an important enjeu, as they say in French, an important challenge uh, that cultural districts face.